today we have a very popular return guest in Dr. Meg Meeker. Dr. Meeker is a pediatrician, mother, and best-selling author of six books. She is the country's leading authority on parenting, teens, and children's health. And Dr. Meg Meeker, we'd like to welcome you back to the Conscience of Kansas radio program. Well, thank you for having me. It's fun to be with you. In the past, we had you on before and talked about one of your books, Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters, Ten Secrets Every Father Should Know. And then we had you back on again to talk about a very thought-provoking book entitled Boys Should Be Boys, Seven Secrets to Raising Healthy Sons. And people were just fascinated with your insights on uh, those issues. And today we're here to talk about your new book, The Ten Habits of Happy Mothers. Others, reclaiming our passion, purpose, and sanity. And I was wondering if you could tell our conscience of Kansas listeners a little bit about this new book. You know, I really wrote the Ten Habits of Happy Mothers because, uh, you know, as a pediatrician, I'm kind of a professional listener of mothers. Realized early on in my practice that one of the best things I can do for kids is to help their parents out. And so that means I do a whole lot of listening. And what I've noticed over the past 15 years in particular is mothers are living with an increasing sense of stress. And I really say increasing because year after year, it just seems to move up a notch. And what I'm seeing is that mothers feel responsible for everything in their kids' lives, from their moods to their grades to how well they do at sports to how well they don't do at sports or Mm -hmm. any failures that a child has, mom feels responsible Um, And they're sort of buckling under this load of feeling that no matter what they do, they're never getting it quite right. And, you know, so whether it's with respect to how well they're parenting, moms feel they're always falling short Um, because there's always a problem, you know, with our kids. There's always an issue or something. Kids aren't always happy all the time. (laughs) Whether it's how well moms are performing at their jobs outside the home, you know, they feel like, well... I'm, you know, if they're home, they feel they should be at work. If they're at work, they feel they should be home. So they sort of never feel like they're doing as well as they could at their workplaces. And then, you know, of course, when it comes to how well moms are doing sort of from a physical fitness standpoint, we feel we're falling behind there. So, you know, in short, I I sense that moms had this sense that they were sort of toppling over the edge. And I wanted to do something to sort of drill down to figure out where is this coming from and what can I offer moms? What, how can I encourage them as a pediatrician to say, you know what, you're taking on too much. You don't need to live life um, this way. Let's settle down and get back to the business of enjoying being a mom again and reeling some of this stuff in. And that's where the book really came from. Wow, that's very interesting. You know, I agree that moms have a tremendous responsibility and having a healthy, emotional life is very, very important. And I've found sort of a, a series of thought in your books. Here's that you try to key in on important points, you number them, and then you go down the list in this new book, The Ten Habits of Happy Mothers. When you look at these habits that you've listed, these 10 habits, it's it's not just uh, when you go and look at them, give a lot of detail. It's not simply a one-liner, you know, Confucius say, be happy and the sun will shine. Right. Like, <laughs> That's you know, right. You break it down. And I want to talk about a couple of the habits that every one of them really is thought-provoking to me. And, and it really makes me inquisitive. I told your publicist that my wife and I are getting ready. We're expecting our first child. Aww. And <laughs> it's an amazing adventure to go through that process at the beginning, you know, to go and have the first sonogram and yes. see that little baby in there dancing around and think, wow, yeah, this is real. This yes. is going to hear the heartbeat going the boom, 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 boom. And, and it's just amazing. And you have this exhilaration and exultation. And then after that settles for a little bit, you kind of get this feeling of, well, I, I hope I don't screw this up. Exactly. <laughs> and you live with that for the rest of your life, I think. And it's exactly that that I think that really is very sad because the truth of the matter is you are wired as a dad, as that baby's dad who hasn't even born yet. And by the way, congratulations. Thank you. You know, your life will never be the same once that little one just pops out. It's just (laughs) wonderful. It's amazing. Um, But you live with this sense of of anxiety about being a failure and doing things wrong. Mm -hmm. And I believe that as that child's dad, you are wired with 
everything you need to do a good enough job, to, do, to be a great dad. Mm-hmm. And it is a rocket science. And you don't need to be a psychiatrist or a psychologist, and you don't need to be a physician, and you don't need to be, you know, a circus director, and, you know, you don't need to be a wealthy millionaire. You don't need to be all these things that you feel you kind of, if you were, you would be a better dad. Mm-hmm. You're that child's dad, and, and, and your wife is that child's mom, and she has everything. She needs to be a great mom. And to learn to sort of let go of some of the stuff that we worry about that is meaningless to our children. And there's so much that we worry about that is meaningless to our children. Case in point, when your wife delivers the child, she will feel that if she does not breastfeed that child for at least a year, there's something wrong with her as a mother. That's what she'll live with because that's what our culture tells you. Now, can I, as a medical expert, say that will make her a better mother? No. Because there are plenty of adoptive mothers out there who don't have an opportunity to breastfeed their children, and they're 